I'm Mark Cavanaugh for Cavi Coaches, and today I'm going to coach you up on the mallet ball activity we did with the rubber mallet and bowling ball. So in this series of videos, we're going to discuss Newton's laws of motion. We're going to start by using a activity call I call the mallet ball activity. So the mallet ball activity involves a rubber mallet and a bowling ball and a course that you have to navigate. And we'll talk about that course right now. So mallet ball, you're using the rubber mallet and only the rubber mallet to navigate this course where you have a start finish box at either end. And you're going to start at the bottom left of the course. And we're going to navigate that course moving up on the screen and then make this right hand turn. Then you're going to have to navigate the course around this circular path one and a half times before you can exit. Then you're going to have to reach the no touch zone, which means you're not allowed to touch the rubber mallet to the bowling ball. And you're going to pay attention to its motion. Once it exits the no touch zone, you're going to make this left hand turn and then stop the bowling ball in the start finish box at the end. So what does it take? So we start with the bowling ball in the bottom left, and you're going to use the rubber mallet, and you're going to hit the rubber mallet on the bowling ball, and you're going to get the bowling ball to move up on the course to this position here. Now, at this point, the bowling ball is moving upward, and we want to get it to move to the right. Now, a lot of students at this point would use the rubber mallet and apply a large force to the bowling ball this way, but that's not going to stop the bowling ball from moving upward which means that it's going to cause the bowling ball to move at an angle. And that's not what we want. We want to make sure we navigate the course correctly. So what we need to do is we first need to not apply the force at this point. What we're going to need to do is stop the bowling ball from moving in the direction it's moving by applying a force in the opposite direction it's moving. Once we do that, we can get the ball moving to the right like we want it to by applying a force and then getting it to that circular path. At this point, we can hit it down into the, an angle because it's not, it's still moving to the right and it will navigate the course around the circular path. So what are we going to have to do to navigate the circular path? Well, we're going to apply a force and we're going to hit the ball towards the center of that circular path all the way around one and a half times, continuing to hit the bowling ball so that it stays in that circular path. And the speed's going to be relatively constant as we do that. Once we get here, we're ready to exit. And we need to stop the ball from moving diagonally. So we're going to hit it at an angle to stop it from moving diagonally and then cause it to move just to the right to get just to the fringe of the no touch zone. And at this point, we could probably apply a force a little bit more as it gets there because when it gets to the no touch zone, we can't touch the bowling ball. So we, we're going to have to hit it hard to get it, make sure that it gets through. Once it gets through, now we have the same thing that we're going to have to do We navigating this course is it's moving to the right. We want it to move up, so we're going to stop it and then start it again to get it to finish the course. At that point, we would then hand the mallet off and then navigate the course the other way using another person. Now, let's answer these questions. So we're going to describe the motion of the ball as it begins to move from the starting box so when we first hit it with the rubber mallet, it wasn't moving, but then we know that the ball was speeding up. If it wasn't moving and then it was moving, the ball was speeding up in the direction that it was hit. As it navigated through the no touch zone, we weren't allowed to touch it and the ball moved at a relatively constant velocity. If the surface was completely horizontal, it would have moved completely at a horizontal or constant velocity. As it moved around the corner of the circular path, in both instances, the ball changed direction, potentially without changing speed. So that means the velocity changes. So the speed could be constant, but the velocity changes because it changed direction. Now, as it returned to the start stop box, it slowed to a stop. So what did we have to do to produce these motions? Well, as it begins to start moving from the start box, the ball was hit with the rubber mallet in the direction we wanted it to move. It sped up. Now, as it moved to the no touch zone, we didn't do anything. Nothing was needed. The ball was already moving in that direction, and we wanted not to get it moving before it got to the no touch zone. What we had to do is we needed to make sure that we came around a corner first, so then we stopped stopped moving in one direction, and then it hit, and then we hit it to make it go in the other direction. So it was moving forward, and then we wanted to make a right hand turn, so we stopped it. 
in the circular path, the ball had to be struck towards the center of that circular path to navigate that circle. So we continually hit it towards the center, causing it to move in a circular path. And then we hit it in the opposite direction of motion to get it stopped at the end of the no touch or the start stop box. So that is how you navigated the course using the rubber mallet. I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great day and an even better tomorrow. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button down below and subscribe to my channel, Cavi Coaches, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Cavi Coaches.